AMD just revealed details on Big Navi and they showed some interesting performance charts. Did they win versus Ampere? Are they the new GPU king? Let's get into it. After months and months of rumors and speculation, Big Navi is finally here and we now have the details. Let's start at the top with the RX 6900 XT and the Big Navi. It has 80 compute units, a game clock of 2015 MHz, a boost clock of 2250 MHz, 128 megabytes of infinity cache, and 16 gigabytes of VRAM for a total board power of 300 watts. Next up is the RX 6800 XT, which has the same specs, except it has just 72 compute units. Finally, the RX 6800, which has just 60 compute units and slower clock speeds. 60 compute units? That's smaller than the 64 compute unit rumor in my last video, but right on target with what I predicted last March. In March of this year, I predicted an 80 compute unit version for $999. I guess I can pat myself on the back now. And a 60 compute unit version for $699. Instead, we got 72 compute units for $649, and the 60 compute unit version dropped down to $579. Why? Because the performance did not improve as much as I expected. When listening to the AMD video last night, it broke my heart when I heard AMD fellow Laura Smith say, In the same 7 nanometer process node. Wait, what? What did she just say? In the same 7 nanometer process node. I couldn't believe what I just heard. AMD was using the same 7 nanometer process node as RDNA 1. Thus, the process node improvements themselves was not going to provide the bigger boost I was expecting. Just two videos ago, I showed the expectation of RDNA 2 and Big Navi being able to push the power inflection point to higher frequencies. That was the expectation when moving to a new 7 nanometer EUV process. Now, we just get tweaked performance from the same 7 nanometer process node. What performance? Well, AMD provided performance charts for all three GPUs, so let's go through them and perform a little analysis to get through all the marketing hype so we can know what to expect on launch day. In my video in September, the August leak by Mr. Cortex of Big Navi being 15% faster than a 2080 Ti turned out to be the 60 compute unit version, which is what I predicted in my September video when I said 15% performance over the 2080 Ti by a mid-level RDNA 2 with about 60 compute units. Sometimes you just gotta believe the data. AMD provided comparisons of the RX 6800 to the RTX 2080 Ti at both 1440p and 4K. Let's start with 1440p. Right away they claimed 1440p gaming leadership. I think it is interesting that they provided the frame rates for the RX 6800, however, left out the frame rates for the 2080 Ti. But since the data is there in the chart, I painstakingly went through the process to populate those frame rates for the 2080 Ti. Now that we have those, we can calculate the percentage differences between the two cards. You can see that in all 10 games shown, the RX 6800 beats the 2080 Ti on average by 19%. However, there are a few outliers, and if you apply the geometric mean, the difference is 16%. That's a rounding error compared to the leak of 15% better than a 2080 Ti. If you tally up the wins, losses, and ties, the RX 6800 wins in all 10 games. However, there is a caveat. The RX 6800 was using smart access memory to achieve those results. Smart access memory is only available on Ryzen 5000 CPUs and using X570 or B550 motherboards. Let's move on to 4K. Again, populating the 2080 Ti frame rates and calculating the percentage differences, you see that the RX 6800 beats the 2080 Ti by 14%. Again, if you tally up the wins, losses, and ties, the RX 6800 wins in 8, has 0 losses, and 2 ties. Again, this is with the caveat that the RX 6800 needing smart access memory to deliver those results. Why did AMD enable smart access memory? What if you have an X470, a B450 motherboard, or are running an Intel system? What kind of gains would you achieve? I suspect that AMD did not show those since they would not have looked very favorable. At 60 compute units, slower clock speeds, 
and with smart access memory turned off, I suspect the RX 6800 to be, on average, up to 10% faster than the 2080 Ti and thus up to 10% faster than the RTX 3070. The RX 6800 XT is the competitor to the RTX 3080 and AMD provided better charts for this comparison. They did not have smart access memory enabled, so this should be good. Let's start with 1440p. Let's fill in the RTX 3080 frame rates and calculate the percentage differences. Green is a win and red is a loss. These values are as much as a 17% win to a 7% loss and this calculates out to just a 4% average win for the RX 6800 XT versus the RTX 3080. Not a very strong win. I would say that anything under 5% is not noticeable and would classify as a tie between these two cards. Taking all the results less than 5% as a tie, then you see that in terms of wins, losses, and ties, the RX 6800 XT wins in 3, loses in 1, and ties in 6. The RX 6800 XT does not look to be the 1440p high frame rate 3080 killer I was expecting. Let's move on to 4K. Let's fill in the RTX 3080 frame rates and calculate the percentage differences. Green is a win and red is a loss. These values are as much as a 12% win to a 9% loss and calculates out to just a 1% average win for the RX 6800 XT. If we change every result that is less than 5% to a tie and we tally up the score, the RX 6800 XT wins in 3, loses in 2, and ties in 5 games. Yes, just as I predicted, the RX 6800 XT is trading blows with the 3080. What about the big Navi, the RX 6900 XT? We did get one chart of the RX 6900 XT. The Big Navi compared to the BF GPU 3090 at 4K Gaming. Let's fill in the RTX 3090 frame rates and calculate the percentage differences. Green is a win and red is a loss. These values are as much as a 15% win to a 6% loss and calculates out to an average of 4% advantage for the Big Navi over the BF GPU. If we change those less than 5% to a tie and tally up the score, Big Navi wins in 5, loses in 2, and ties in 3. So that's it. The Big Navi just defeated the BF GPU, and AMD is now the king of GPUs. Right? Not so fast. AMD pulled a double caveat on this one, as they not only had smart access memory enabled, like with the RX 6800, but now they also enabled Rage Mode. Rage Mode opens up the power budget and provides about a 1-2% benefit. Let's go back to the putting it all together chart. Some of the games shown here are also on the 3090 chart. For simplicity, let's just say the improvement with these turned on for the RX 6800 XT is the same for the RX 6900 XT. We can see that 6 of the 10 games are represented here and if we remove the percentage differences of those 6 games from the 6900 XT, you see the percentages drop to single digits, and if we compute the average now, you can see that Big Navi loses by just 1%. And if you tally up the wins, losses, and ties, Big Navi wins in 4, loses in 4, and ties in 2. This seems to be very much an even match at 4K Gaming. I would have to call this one a draw. Since I already had the data, I wanted to get a quick glimpse of how much better the 6900 XT was over the 6800 XT. And looking at the numbers AMD provided, the 6900 XT is on average 12% faster than the RX 6800 XT. Keep in mind, that is with the double caveat of the 6900 XT having both smart access memory and rage mode enabled, while the 6800 XT did not have either enabled. I suspect that when the independent reviews go live in December, the 6900 XT will be less than 10% faster than the 6800 XT. I also created a chart with the RX 6800 versus the 6800 XT compared at 1440p. It tells a similar story where the 6800 XT is on average 12% faster over the smart access memory enabled 6800. I expect that when the reviews go live, the real difference will be in the range of 15 to 20%.
at 4K, the 6800 XT extends its average lead over the 6800 to 14%, and I expect that without smart access memory, it will be more like a 20% difference when the reviews go live. Finally, a plot with all three cards at 4K so that you can see for yourself the differences in the data that AMD provided. I have nothing to conclude here other than AMD not only enabled Rage Mode on the 6900 XT, but in going through all of this data, it also enabled Rage Mode within me. Some people are saying that RDNA 2 is Radeon Division's Zen 2 moment. I would disagree with that assessment, and here's why. With Zen 2, AMD clearly lagged in CPU gaming performance versus Intel. However, AMD clearly won with the performance for computing tasks like in Cinebench for a lot less money. So overall, Zen 2 just won on performance per dollar. With Big Navi, AMD Radeon did not show one compute-focused benchmark. Where was the GPU Blender Render comparison? What about the Luxmark score? What about video encoding times for creative software? And what about the features? Where was the ray tracing demo? Where is AMD's version of DLSS? How good is the new encoder for streamers? Where is AMD's version of NVIDIA Broadcast to appeal to streamers? If they had any features that were really good versus NVIDIA, then they would have showed them. So how does RDNA 2 win in anything versus Ampere? I was expecting better 1440p performance and slightly better 4K performance. Instead, it looks like they'll trade blows and AMD has a less developed feature list. Not a Zen 2 moment. From AMD's presentation and the data they provided, what have we learned? For the RX 6800, you'll get double the VRAM for up to 10% better performance for 16% more money versus the RTX 3070. For the RX 6800 XT, you'll get the same performance with more VRAM to trade off against NVIDIA's better feature list for a $50 cost savings. For the RX 6900 XT, you'll get two-thirds the VRAM and, just as I predicted, for performance, you'll get a card nipping at the heels of the BF GPU for two-thirds the cost. With all the rumors of higher clock speeds within the last week, I wonder if the AIB partner cards just may be able to push performance to beat Ampere. If AMD had only produced RDNA 2 on TSMC's 7 nanometer EUV process node, then we would have had better performance with more VRAM to trade off against Nvidia's better feature list, and we might have been announcing a new GPU king. Then again, we are just one year away from RDNA 3 and the second coming of Big Navi. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.